this is actually a really interesting part of what we saw this week. This is a kind of a, a stop moment here for me. Um, we actually get the reintroduction of some characters that we met back in season three. And so season three, of course, the, the big climax of that was the thing the 5,000. But one of the key characters that we met was Leander, who then brought us to the other leaders uh, within the, the Decapolis area, because the Chosen, of course, took the feeding of the 5,000 and mixed it with the feeding of the 4,000. And the feeding of the 4,000 happens in the Decapolis, but the feeding of the 5,000 actually happens like with, within the Jewish people, right? So they kind of mix those two because the feeding of the 5,000 and the Chosen uh, actually is... Uh, uh, basically all Gentiles or mainly Gentiles there uh, while there's some other things kind of mixed in, but we get the reintroduction of Leander here along with some of the leaders that we met in the Decapolis, which is really, really cool that they're here for Passover uh, and saying hi to some of the disciples here. Andrew. <laughs> and of course we have Leander saying hello to the new Philip, <laughs> which of course I'm sure the show is not going to like, you know, harp on at all. But of course this is the first time that these characters, uh, not these characters are meeting, but these actors are working together uh, in terms of the new Philip and Leander, even though Yoshi worked with uh, the character of Leander in season three. You remember Dion? Of course! And then you remember Dion. This is another one of the leaders that fought and, and was angry during the, the season finale of season three. And, and then Fatia. And then she goes to give uh, Andrew a hug. So she opens up her arms like this. And of course, Jewish society, Andrew's not going to hug her. <laughs> and then she realizes that, you know, and she kind of like resets her brain. Oh. So we see that reaction right here. That's kind of her like nervously kind of looking uh, as she's just realized what she's done. So let's go back and watch that one more time. We're going to have a few other angles. We're going to see this at as well. Of course. She goes to hug him and then she's like, oh, oh never mind. <laughs> background. Here's another angle of it here. So we see Andrew right there and Philip, And then we also see Tamar. And so you can see how the Chosen also shoots some of these shots. So I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger for you guys. You can see these, that obviously Dallas is back there. We've got a bunch of the camera operators. And then we have two main camera guys right here who are holding two different cameras to get two different angles of the same shot. This way they can shoot more quickly. They don't have to you know, use one camera, then move it, and then use another camera. Um, they can use two cameras at one time in order to make it a little bit more uh, fast and quick you know, for uh, the day's shooting there. So... So there we got Leander there. This one is the same thing from another angle behind. You can see Fatia right there in front of this guy with the, the blue right here. Let me see if you can see my mouse. Yeah, there we go. So Fatia is right here, and then we see Dion, and then we see Leander. Right there, giving a hug to Philip and to Andrew. This one doesn't have any sound on it. So here is another really, really important scene from this week. This gives us a huge hint, obviously, to what they're shooting this week. And this is going to give us a lot of context as to what we should be expecting moving forward. Uh, listen very closely to what, uh, what Andrew says as he approaches the table here. Hey, if you like this small portion of our live stream, you can watch the entire almost two hour live stream over on our Patreon at snipesupport.com. This is the best way to help support what we do here on the channel and to continue helping us make videos just like this. We go live every Sunday and so you can see that full live stream on Patreon only. Thanks so much in advance for helping us support the channel and let's get back to the video. Uh, listen very closely to what, uh, what Andrew says as he approaches the table here. I'll put up the I'll put up the volume so you guys can hear, but listen very closely. You're not going to be able to see very much because uh, Dallas is kind of behind the camera and, and there's a bunch of stuff blocking it. But listen very closely to what's happening in this scene here. Action! We have to change the coins. Shout it out if you hear what he said. So we see Philip. We see Leander. They're approaching a vendor. So let's go back and listen to that one more time. See if you can hear it. And we'll jump into it. 
Action. Really? First stop, we have to change the coins. All right, so if you didn't hear it, what Andrew says there is, first stop, we have to exchange the coins. Remember what they're here for. They're here for Passover, right? If they're going to exchange the coins, what, where do they have to go, right? Because if they're going to the temple for Passover and they're here to, to celebrate the feast and do all the stuff you need to do in the temple, you can't use normal currency, right? You can't use currency that has to do with uh, the Greeks and Rome and all the stuff that they normally use out in the world, right? You have to use the temple coins, which are made of silver. They're very important. Uh, maybe there's some other coins made of silver that are going to be coming up later on in this season uh, that would be really important, right? Uh, and so this idea of the money changers, okay, this idea of the money changers and this idea of uh, them having to exchange the money for these silver coins that are the temple tax, right? The temple coins um, is really, really important, okay? Not only for them to be able to sacrifice and to celebrate Passover, but also later down the line, either at the end of this season or maybe at the beginning of next season. I, I believe it's going to be at the end of this season, though, whenever Judas betrays Jesus, okay? So, this is a massive thing that's coming, right? This is this is building into the future of what the chosen is going to be. And so this is a really, really big thing. So we have to exchange the coins. This means that we're leading to, at least for this scene in particular, this is at least a portion of what's building up to Jesus cleansing the temple. And that is where uh, that is where we see some really, really cool stuff coming up soon. But we're going to look at a few more scenes. Then we'll look at some of that scripture where Jesus cleanses the temple because there's some really cool things within there as well. We have to change the coins. So we see there Philip and then Fatia. We see Leander and Philip in this screen. This is another one of the camera operators here. We're turning around and we're going back. And we're turning around and we're going back. Go ahead. <laughs> And we see all those people. So this is supposed to be Solomon's portico, okay? This is a large part of um, of the temple here, basically outside of the inner courts, outside of the Holy of Holies, where the where the large, like, actual temple is, um, where the ark used to be um, uh, held, basically, before it was lost, essentially. Um, and so here they have a bunch of different vendors. Remember last season, a lot of these vendors that we saw were not as ornate as we're seeing here. My guess is that all of the kind of yellow tented uh, areas are all money changers and that the other uh, vendors that have other things like um, like thatched roofs and things like that are other um, vendors that are selling either sacrifices or livestock or different things to help in the temple, right? So they're selling specific things for specific sacrifices such as grain, or pigeons or uh, lambs or whatever else <clears throat> that are in the temple specifically for that reason, uh, goats and different things like that. Turn around going back. Yep, lots of moving. So you see just the vast number of extras that are here. Um, in the YouTube video that we're going to take a look at later, they actually say that there's 600 extras, but in some of these shots, it looks like there's a lot more uh, than 600 extras. So I wonder if some of the days there's just way more than others, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Great, 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 great. Lots of moving through here. Catch the day, yep. Awesome. You can hear them giving direction as well. Here again, near the temple, <clears throat> again near the temple, we see Andrew and we see Philip and we see Fatia and Dion and Leander, and uh, they're all in this same area again. So this is a continuation of the scene we saw previously on uh, on the previous day there. I love I love Dallas's uh, Dallas's uh, kind of. <laughs> filming when he films like this and his fingers like in the bottom and then you can like hear his breathing so he's like this <sighs> it's just so funny to me every time <laughs> love you Dallas of course I love you <laughs> So again, we're seeing those um, <clears throat> those money changers, and if you listen to the audio, this is Adam Drake, if you don't know, right in the middle of the screen. He is the assistant director. He's kind of the guy, as you can hear over those loudspeakers, he's the one that's kind of calling all the shots, saying what's kind of going on, um, <clears throat> yelling, uh, and telling people, hey, this is this is the, what we're doing during this shot. Hey, we need you to do this. Hey, get this ready, blah, blah, blah. And you can actually hear him talking about the money changers as well. So this kind of confirms what we're talking about previously as well.
So you can see all those people walking with livestock and doing different things. Uh, really, really cool. This is the same area that we shot uh, last season as well. Uh, if you didn't catch me in season four, there's a few scenes where I popped up and uh, uh, we'll do a breakdown of that once the season comes out on the app. But um, yeah, it was a lot of fun for sure. Very hot. Very different from here because they're cold now. <laughs> it's been rainy and cold. Uh, but when we were there, it was very, very hot for sure last summer. So here we get part of the scripture. Uh, right here we see Jesus cleanses the temple. Now there are a few different um, kind of versions of this and areas of this. Uh, I like this one in particular uh, because it just makes Jesus sound like like <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I think this is in John chapter 2, uh, so verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple and with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade his disciples remembered uh, that it was written zeal for your house will consume me so we see this in a couple of different areas as well within scripture uh, I think there's three different locations where this appears in the Gospels. And so this one is really interesting because we actually see that Jesus saw what was happening. He goes and he makes a whip, right? <laughs> he makes a whip out of cords that he finds, and then he drives everybody out, right? The other two actually don't mention the whip that he has, uh, but he, or maybe they do, but they don't, they don't mention that he makes it, right? Um, and so he actually uh, drives them out of the temple. This is called the cleansing of the temple in all three of those locations. So why is this important? Why does Jesus do this? Jesus does this because they are making the temple a den of robbers or thieves, or in this version, he says, um, a, a den of a house of trade, basically. <clears throat> so because there is an exchange between a different type of currency into the temple currency, um, it's it's obviously going to be something that can be easily taken advantage of. Just like Matthew, as he was a tax collector, he took extra money and he stole a bunch of people's money, right? Just like that, we're also seeing as these money changers are stealing money and they're taking extra money uh, than what they are supposed to have, right? And so within this scripture, uh, we understand that these money changers are, are basically turning the temple, which is supposed to be the holiest of holy places, right? Uh, literally, there's a location called the Holy of Holies, right? The holiest location that there is. And they're sitting here and they are robbing people right in front of God, essentially, right? And so obviously, Jesus does not play kindly to this and he very much wants them out of here. But again, we're seeing here, in this scripture at the end, his disciples remembered a prophecy, right? That came about the Messiah says, zeal for your house will consume me. Okay. So the house, when they mention the house, generally they're talking about the temple, the house of the Lord. Right. And so there's a lot more to that scripture if you want to go check it out, but I thought this was really, really cool. And of course, this is going to be one of the major moments that we're expecting to see in season five as it's Holy week. This is like one of those key moments, cleansing of the temple within, uh, within this, holy week that we've been expecting here i hope you enjoyed this video and of course leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this if you enjoyed this one you'll for sure like this video right here so go ahead and check that out we'll see you on the next one peace